Barbara, are you multitasking or what? I am infinitely. I I hit a critical phase change. <laughs> okay, so here you see yourself here. Have you he ever heard of a critical phase change? <laughs> uh, no, but I think I'm experiencing one right now. <laughs> okay, Barbara, I I'm Rahasia with the Lotus Guide Magazine, and I really appreciate you taking your time to do this. And I was thinking before we start. I would give you a little brief idea about where I'm coming from because our magazine is starting to reach out into the fringe mainstream now. So we're okay. trying to find ways of bringing them information they can resonate with. Because, Good. Yeah, because without uh, the way I see it, it's like Einstein once said that we're never going to come up with the solutions to the same old problems from the same level of awareness. Yes. I, I really think that the only thing going for us is a global shift of consciousness. Yes, so, I, I agree. So this is what makes this so important to bring it to the mainstream, because I don't think the mainstream is going to be able to figure this out without this shift coming mm -hmm. into play. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. I, I think that's very wise. I've been. I mean, I used to be more mainstream myself when I lived in Washington, and I was involved with Congress and <clears throat> the Futurist Movement and the Space Movement. And then I came to California, right. and you get more into the transformational and the spiritual, and to br and to bridge back out with right. this inner shift into the outer shift is really where where we're at. Yeah, it's good to have that background because you, you and I both know it's it's easy to preach to the choir. I mean, they're with us. Right. We're all wanting to do this, but we we need to reach the the normal quote unquote people. Right, right. So we're the new norm. Yeah, we are the new norm. So. <laughs> okay. All right. I I totally agree with you. I see see exactly what you're saying. So anything we can go for in that direction, like. What what is it like when I when I hear you talk, I feel a firmness of conviction. Where do, where does that come from? That's a good question. The firmness of conviction, I would say, comes from inner experience of the nature of reality and a lot of study. Right. So the inner experience is one of. Uh, of the uh, spiritual evolution and desire to participate and, and all of that and then my studies of Teilhard de Chardin and Sri Aurobindo and Buckminster Fuller and many many others has led me to realize that we're in a time of planetary shift and on the one hand break breakdowns that are being recorded mainly through our media and through the scientific investigation as well as prophetic inputs and a lot of attention has been placed on what is breaking down. <clears throat> and so I have become really interested in what's breaking through. Right. And in my study of evolution, we see that crisis precedes transformation and problems are evolutionary drivers. So I've become a student of evolutionary change. Right. I was reading what you had to say about the chaos theory and all of that, and I've always been a, a reader of Tehard and Lewis Thomas, Lives of Cells. Huh? Yes. Very, very good way to look at the Earth as an organic living organism, because yeah. we've we've sort of lost that being in touch with that. Yes. You know? And I think it's important we get that back, because that's where our new information, the real solutions are going to come from reconnecting with Earth. Reconnecting with Earth and, and even deeper, I would say, uh, connecting with the, the nature of evolutionary transformation. You see, Earth itself, if you think about it, started it was, it was a miracle itself, the formation of Earth. And then out of that Earth came bacteria and then single-celled life and, and the biosphere grew. And then uh, animal life and then early human life and then the great avatars of human life and civilization and now I see that what we're getting in touch with is the, the planetary the emergence of 
a planetary culture, of a co-creative humanity, of science and technology that completely transcends the creature-human condition. Biotech, nanotech, quantum computing, uh, you know, the, the whole internet, cell phone, nervous system connecting us. So I don't think we're getting back to anything. <clears throat> I think we're getting with what's emergent right. and looking for the direction of that emergence. And it may be perfectly true that something is failing and dying. A certain form of growth, a certain form of consciousness. It's, it's just like Neanderthal. <laughs> There's, right. There was a shift from Neanderthal to Homo sapiens. It was basically a shift of species. And then we've had a self-reflective consciousness for maybe 50,000 years only. And it looks like self-reflective consciousness has given birth to a more evolutionary whole system consciousness that's barely surfaced yet in the general public. Right. It certainly is at the growing edge of intelligent people everywhere. Yeah, it, and it seems like it, if the past holds true, we're, it seems like there's a, underneath the fabric of space, there's this matrix of consciousness that consistently tries to reorganize itself into higher and higher and more complex forms, whether it be atoms going to molecules, molecules to cells, cells, and here we are, we, we've evolved to this point, and if, if the consciousness that's um, emanating and manifesting through us holds true, what we're doing right now through the internet is an outer manifestation of what we're doing on a spiritual level of, of connecting into a global awareness. Exactly. And I, I think um, that when you look at the internet and the search engines as, in Teilhard de Chardin's language, a noosphere, N-O-O-S sphere, right which is a sphere of mind connectivity, of intelligence. It's also a heart sphere of empathy. Right. I mean, if there's a tsunami in Japan, we feel it. It's totally unprecedented. If there's an a earthquake in Haiti, we are there, and people are rushing to help and sending money, and so the planet is interacting at an unprecedented level of both breakdowns of maybe misuse of growth and power, and but at the same time, empathy, creativity, and spirituality. So it, to me, we're right at one of those threshold points, and what would tip the scales toward a more positive emergence? That's, that's the basic question. Right, and, and I think this is where, I, I remember talking to Roland McCready of HeartMath, and he was telling me the importance of coherence with my heart, my mind. And it seems like the earth, like you say, does have a heart. And I can feel in myself something that I can't really pin down. But I, I feel like even talking to you right now, you're, we're talking over the internet and all that. But I can feel a feeling here that I know is coming from you. Yes, indeed. You know, the, the word resonance, re-sounding, is a vibration, and it affects the field. And that phrase, morphogenetic field, that Rupert Sheldrake developed, which is a field that is, a, is affected by thought and behavior and learning. So like, if, you know, if a rat learns to do a maze somewhere, another rat learns it more easily somewhere else. There's a field, morphogenetic field, a formative field, and I feel like this conversation among so many hundreds of thousands of interviews and talks and teachings and, and cell phones and Facebook, yep. filling, filling, filling the atmosphere with a form of consciousness from infantile all the way up to uh, loving, innovative genius. And so one of the great things is that the more we can fill it with the innovative and lovely, loving creativity, connecting, the more the field will make it easier and easier for others to connect. The only thing missing is I can't give you a hug right now. <laughs> 
and and also I have all my life, since particularly since the Apollo space program, had a real passion for the meaning of high technology. How come, starting with the atomic bomb, when Einstein realized the nature of the atom, E equals mc squared, and that was able to be built into a bomb to destroy the world, that was the signal of the beginning of conscious evolution for me, because that means the human species gained an awareness it could affect its own evolution right. to a global scale. And we also realized that we have new powers, that if we use them well, our powers we used to attribute to gods. Yeah, yeah and exactly. I, I was 15 years old when we dropped the bombs, and that's when I asked my life question, which was, what is the meaning of our new power that's good? Well, you know, I, I was talking to Bruce Lipton about the evolution of consciousness, and what what is strange is consciousness has been evolving, but it's been pretty automatic through the molecular world, the mineral, the vegetable mm -hmm. world. But now what was the evolution of consciousness has become a conscious evolution because of our participation in it, which is the good news and the bad. That, that, that's exactly right. And as one of the champions of this world view, conscious evolution, and I've written books on it, and I've been teaching it now for years, is that evolution itself has a breakthrough here, because we are, we are created by the evolutionary process. And here we are, evolution, becoming conscious of evolution. It's right. really, I believe we will see this as great a jump as self-reflective consciousness was with Homo sapiens. Sapiens. And this, I call it Homo Universalis. I think what's emerging is a universal human and a universal humanity. And the universal human would be, is connected to the heart, through the whole of life, but is awakened from within by deep life purpose to give that creativity further into the world and by a more cosmic consciousness. And if you combine all of that with the possibilities that come from biotechnology, nanotechnology, genetics, robotics, space travel, you begin to see a universal species, really. Mm -hmm. So when we get through this current set of crises and opportunities, if you stand for a moment on the other side, you know, we're calling it a crisis of birth, of the next era of evolution. So I've been coining the phrase recently of life beyond birth instead of life after death. Right. And, and, and like birth, you can't birth. change your mind. Life after this phase of consciousness, of right. this phase of capacity, and we're calling this transition the birth of a more co-creative universal species. So yeah. life after birth is on the other side of this crisis. Right. Yeah, in a different, unprecedented, it's hard to even grok it in a Heinleinian sense because it's so out of our historical experience to have consciousness that is somehow intertwined in a global planetary mind. But I, I think this is happening. And it could be that this is why all of the quote unquote junk DNA is there. We only use a small percentage of our brains. It's probably a whole frontier that's getting ready to open up to us.